Hi folks, hope everybody's okay. It's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. Hope everybody's okay. Uh, we're having um, a Bible study on uh, the providence of God. So if you'd like to turn to the book of Ruth, and I would encourage you before this Bible study um, to go and read the book of Ruth yourself and um, familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with the book and uh, you know it'll be more of a blessing to you if, you if you've read the book. So the book of Ruth it's after Judges so if you go to after Judges and uh, let's pray it's good to be with you. Father we thank you for your goodness we thank you for your love and your grace and Father, we give you the praise and glory in the Lord Jesus Christ's name. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, these three are one. And Lord, we praise you and thank you for this day. And Lord, I pray as I do this study today, I just pray that people will be blessed. And that Father, your Holy Spirit might come upon us. And I just pray that people might be encouraged and blessed, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Bless each family, each person represented here today. In the name of Jesus, for your glory, Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're looking at the providence of God and we're looking at the book of Ruth. And um, this is a sermon that I did, but we're going to use it as a Bible study. But I preached it on a, a Sunday morning, a Sunday afternoon at uh, Awood. Uh, Presbyterian and Reform Fellowship. That's just a little group of us that meet to study the Word of God. And um, but I'm going to do it today as a Bible study. So normally in a sermon I'd read a full chapter, etc. Uh, but in a Bible study, and because you know I want you to go and study it yourself, so you go and read the book if you would. Read the book of Ruth before you enter into this study. And then you'll get more out of the study. Uh, a key text could be verse uh, 16. Uh, Ruth chapter 1 verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. Where thou goest, lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. You could take that as a text that you can meditate on and Put all the Bible study around that text. But we're looking at the doctrine of the providence of God, which is very strong and comes very clearly out of the book. George Washington said, Providence has at all times been my only dependence, for all the resources seem to have failed us. So he's saying that he believes in the providence of God, that God is working out things for the good in his own life. A Christian family was reported in the Daily Mail to be going, to be going through a terrible time where a, a girl of, of 15 has, has been taken in by the social services and uh, wanted to encourage this girl into transgender thinking about herself. But it's on record that they've demonised the Christian family and said that they're narrow-minded and bigoted because of their Christian values. And they're going through a very difficult time and all of us at some point in our lives have gone through difficult times and we need to know in those difficult times that God has it in hand. God knows what he's doing, he's in control and it's a great comfort to know that everything in our lives that God is working it out for us and God is in control. So Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 6 Nehemiah 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 chapter 9 verse 6 Nehemiah 9 verse 6 says Thou even thou art Lord alone Thou hast made heaven the heavens of heavens with all their hosts the earth and all things that are therein the seas and all that is therein, and thou 
Here it is, preserveth them all, and the host of heaven worship thee. If God preserves everything. He upholds everything. You could read Psalm 145, verse 9, verse 13, verse 15 to 17, and Acts chapter 7, verse 25. And these passages also confirm that God upholds all things. So everything is being upheld, allowed to move forward, allowed to exist because of God's will. And the book of Ruth teaches us this doctrine of providence very, very clearly. Naomi and Amalek move away from Bethlehem and they go to Moab because there's a famine and they want some food. Uh, Naomi's husband, uh, Elimelech, means uh, God is king and he contradicted himself because he disobeyed God. He went from Bethlehem into Moab, a place of temptation, a place where they were doing evil things in that land. And Elimelech, who's, who believed God is king, was not putting God first. And that teaches us that in difficult times, we can say that we believe God is king in our lives, but go the complete opposite. So be careful, keep close to the Lord. But anyway, Ruth and her, uh, so Naomi and her husband go to, uh, to Moab to find hope and find food but Naomi's husband dies and not only her husband her two sons who married Moabite women they die so she's destitute with two girls Ruth decides the Moabite girl decides to stay with Naomi and Orpha leaves now Naomi and Ruth are destitute they go back to Bethlehem and there Ruth goes into a field to glean or collect some grain because in the Old Testament there was provision for the poor that people could pick food on the edge of the fields. So they, she goes and does that and as she does she meets Boaz who's a relative of Naomi. Now there's a custom in the year of Jubilee every 50 years whenever a family's been in debt somebody in the family who was wealthy could buy back the person's land and keep the land in the family and that was the redeemer now Boaz could do this for Naomi and her family so Boaz went to the gate said is there any other relative the relative that could have married Ruth said no so Boaz got Ruth as his wife and also bought back the land and the heritage of Naomi's family. There you see Ruth had nothing, Naomi had nothing now. Ruth is married to the wealthiest man in Bethlehem or one of the wealthiest men in Bethlehem. And not only that, that, that child that Ruth has becomes the great, 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 great grandfather of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see the hand of God in this situation. God prefer, preparing Boaz to be the husband of Ruth. God preparing the food to provide for Naomi and Ruth. And God preparing the way of the Messiah. We can see him working in every intricate situation. In the general life of Ruth and in the particular life of Ruth. And that is the doctrine of providence. One writer said of the book of Ruth, the most beautiful short story ever written. So first of all, the providence of God in calamity. When I was in Chester uh, last week, I met a man who had gone through a terrible time and was wrestling with the issue of suicide. Someone he knew was rejected by a church to be buried who committed suicide and he wondered why a church would do that and I agree with him I thought that was wrong but the point is this is that who am I to judge this man he's gone through a difficult time and maybe you've gone through a difficult time and Ruth uh, Naomi's family went through a difficult time in Ruth chapter 1 verse 2 and 5 and the name of the man was Amalek and then verse 3 and Amalek Naomi's husband died and she was left with her two sons 
verse 5, and Manon and Chilion died. So Naomi went through a terrible tragedy. It was enough to lose her husband, but now she's lost her sons. We're reminded of the book of Job in Job chapter 1, verse 15, 22, how the news of losing his family. And then on top of that, in John chapter, uh, Job chapter 2, verse 7 and 10, he's got boils all over him. It was enough that he lost his family, but now he's got boils. And sometimes we go through these terrible times. In Genesis chapter 45, 1 to 6, Joseph meets his brothers who told, sold him into slavery. And he said, don't worry, God, God sent me before you to prepare the way for food. And it says in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to them that love God. So in these great terrible times when we feel tragedy upon tragedy, there is this God who's working on our behalf, who's gone before us. I know it's hard at times. I know you find it hard. I know it's rough. I know it's tough. But God has gone before you. He's prepared the way for you. And in the midst of that preparing the way, in the midst of the suffering of Naomi, she had comfort. She had Ruth who stayed with her, verse 16. Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people and thy God, my God. And Naomi had this comfort of Ruth. And it reminds me of 2 Corinthians 7. 5 and 6. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians 7, 5 and 6. If you get your Bible out, please get your Bible out. Don't stand there like a dodo, just listening. Check out what I say. I might be saying things wrong, so check it out. What's the Bible say? Come on now. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5 and 6. Now he that wrought us from the self same thing is God who also hath given us the earnestness of the Spirit, sorry, 2 Corinthians 7, 2 Corinthians 7, 5 and 6, I love this verse. For wherein we come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side, without, with fightings, were, within were fears, nevertheless God comforted those that are cast down, God comforted, God comforts those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of who? Titus. God will comfort you in your tragedy by sending a Titus. God comforted Naomi by sending a Ruth. And there are times in your life when you feel you're alone, you feel you're discouraged, you feel that the suffering is piling on. I want to tell you that God will send you a Ruth, that God will send you a Titus, and they will be a comfort to you. Number two, the providence of God in Practical need. We've looked at the providence of God in calamity. Now the providence of God in practical need. Forgive me, my voice is struggling these days. I, in open air preaching, my, I need to rest this voice, I think, for a week. Because uh, it, it's going to break. The providence of God in practical need. If you turn to Ruth chapter 2, Ruth chapter 2, verse 1 and uh, verse 9. Let thy eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them, have not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee. And when thou art a thirst, go unto the vessel and drink of that which the young men have drawn. So Boaz is saying to Ruth, look, you go and get the food that you need. God will provide for you, my friend. In the midst of when you feel that you just can't cope, when you feel that you just haven't got the resources, I promise you, if you put God first, God will meet your need. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Now, it's not a case of just let go and let God. Ruth took some responsibility for her life. She did whatever she could. She went and gleaned in the field. Some of us, most of us are called to full-time work where we have to go out and work, yeah. Some of us are called to full-time uh, Christian work. Some are paid to do that, some are not paid. But we have to do whatever we can do, whatever that is. 
in the situation. But when we've done whatever we can do, then we can be assured that God will meet our need. Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Twenty-five. Take therefore, I say unto you, therefore say I unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the earth, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto your stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto thee, unto you, that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, a ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherein shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth what you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And then if you turn to Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, Philippians 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing but in everything, but in prayer and supplication, the thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Then it says, Verse 19, Philippians 4, 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So, whatever your needs are at the moment, whatever they are, physical, spiritual, emotional needs, God will meet those needs. He'll meet those needs. What he wants you to do is put him first. Oh, to put him first. The great and mighty God. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land, that old hair mirrors love vast as the ocean, to put God first, to lift God up, to worship him, to adore him, to bring glory to him, to be in love with him, to be raptured by him, and to adore him and put him first in your life. Lift him up in your life, and God will come, and God will meet your need, and he'll lead you, and it's hard to trust him. When you have a need, a desperate need that you need meeting and you want that need to be met, but it doesn't seem to be being met. Sorry, I'll just be one minute. Sorry. Hello there, good morning. I'm from United Utility in North West Water. I was wondering if I could take some samples from your cold water tap, please. Um, okay, okay. Nothing to worry about. All it is, it's just a water quality test, that's all. Okay. All right, Dad. Well, every day we do one round here, and every time we do it, we've just got to make sure we're doing a different property. 